Hello and welcome to Euro Channel. You probably clicked on this video because you have the urge to go to the bathroom often, even at night. There's a weak stream and you feel you don't empty your bladder well. Your doctor might have told you that your prostate is enlarged and causing all of this. And you might ask yourself whether this misery will continue until the end of your life. Then you've come to the right place because in this video I am going to give you non-surgical treatment options how to make life easier again. First of all, benign prostatic enlargement is a very common condition in the aging male. It is estimated that 40% of men over 50 years are affected. In 80 year olds it is nearly 90%. Benign prostatic enlargement often leads to what we call benign prostatic obstruction and is associated with a number of symptoms by the name of LUTs, lower urinary tract symptoms. I named a few of these symptoms in the beginning. LUTs is a significant disruptor of quality of life. My first advice to you is to get a proper diagnosis. This includes to get your prostate volume measured by ultrasound and an examination by finger plus getting your PSA checked. All of this is to rule out any prostate cancer. Prostate cancer has nothing to do with benign prosthetic enlargement but it may cause LUTs as well. Prostate cancer may serve as an example for conditions that may cause LUTs but are unrelated to prosthetic size. I'll skip that part for now and give you some treatment options for the enlarged prostate that will cause obstruction and prevent the bladder from emptying properly. Selective alpha blockers are always a good starting point. They target the bladder neck only and won't interfere with alpha receptors in other parts of the body. As you might know, some alpha blockers like doxazosin and terazosin are prescribed for high blood pressure. Drugs like tamsulosin have almost no effect on blood pressure but only act at the bladder neck. It will cause the bladder neck and prostate smooth muscle to relax. It will be easier to empty the bladder, there will be a better urinary flow and overall LUTs will be reduced. One of the downsides of alpha blockers is interference with ejaculation volume. Under the influence of the drug, semen volume will be markedly reduced. This is especially true for tamsulosin. It is also possible to block the conversion from testosterone into dihydrotestosterone within the prostate. You might have heard about drugs that do that. Their names are finasteride and dutasteride. If the prostate runs short of dihydrotestosterone, it will start to shrink. The effect is not that pronounced and it takes time, but on the long run, it will be possible to reduce prostate size by 10 to 20 percent. Science has found that prostate size and PSA level are predictors. So a relatively large prostate together with an elevated PSA level, prostate cancer has been excluded of course, will do best with a combination of an alpha blocker with finasteride or dutasteride. In my office I'm using Tadalafil in daily dosing a lot. It is a long-acting PDE5 inhibitor, initially marketed by the name of Cialis. It works well in many men, especially when it comes to nocturia. The number of visits to the bathroom at night gets significantly reduced in many of my patients. Similar to alpha blockers, PDE5 inhibitors act through smooth muscle relaxation in the prostate and urethra. As men who suffer from LUTs also very often suffer from erectile dysfunction, this drug is of dual use. There are some contraindications with PD5 inhibitors though, as they may not be used together with nitrates, the potassium channel opener nicorandyl, and the alpha blockers doxazosin and terazosin. A combination with the alpha blocker tamsulosin is possible, however. Another non surgical option might be low intensity shock waves, ESWT. One of the properties of shock waves is their muscle relaxing ability. A recent pilot study in 32 men with BPE LUTs showed a significant improvement of symptoms after being treated with ESWT. Additionally, the researchers noted a better erectile function too. Okay, this is a pilot study and general conclusions can't be drawn. However, for me, this is a very interesting study since it confirms my own experience with five years of shockwave treatment. So maybe we are looking at a breakthrough here. We'll see what large scale studies will show. If you want to try this kind of treatment, I advise you to get treated with focused shockwaves as radial waves most probably don't have the same effect. My device is a Dornier Arius 2. The mode of shockwave generation is electromagnetic. To my knowledge, the Arius is not approved in the US. 
but if you're watching from the States, the Storz Duralith SD1 has FDA approval. This is also a machine with focused shock waves from an electromagnetic generator. By the way, I'm not getting paid from any of these companies to say this. There is one thing about benign prosthetic enlargement not to be forgotten. It is only one possible cause of LUTs, so always blaming LUTs on the prostate wouldn't be correct. But I'm leaving out this part here. But if you're interested, I already uploaded a video that explains what I mean. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.